Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, to my channel uh, called uh, Cyberzone, and this is my first episode. And I would like to start, you know, um, by saying that you know my channel will be all about uh, uh, technology, and it's going to be about development, web development, programming, uh, you name it, anything about anything and uh, everything related to computers. And uh, I like to start with. Uh, uh, this series that I have uh, previously written on Medium, so I'll be uh, guiding you through the article and uh, so that you can follow me and also you'll be learning on the way. So this is what it will be. Uh, we will be doing. So PHP Test Driven Development Part One uh, Introduction. So let's get started with the uh, episode. Uh, so. Test driven development, right? So mm, this is what. Uh, so what is test driven development? I, let's see the definition right here. Test driven development is a code coding practice uh, where you write a test first, then you write the code that passed the test. Usually in a short iterative cycle. Yeah, that's what the definition is, uh, pretty much. And yeah, this is an article. I'll link to this article uh, on the uh, uh, comments. I mean, on the description below. And uh, this is the series that I wrote uh, previously. It's uh, pretty much almost uh, one year now. Wow. Um, yeah, I encourage you to check it out so it'll be easy to follow through. As I'll be just following through the articles and then uh, showing you how to do, do it and follow it. Uh, it's pretty much I'm uh, dog fooding my own articles so that you can understand uh, uh, even more easier. With both the article and the video awesome well, let's get started on the next one okay so tdd it was you know popularized by kent beck kent beck is uh, if we can click on here is the guy over here yeah this is the guy yeah this is an american software engineer and creator of action programming so action programming is something um, uh, that he you know uh, so yes, it's a software development methodology. Uh, it is for you know a method to of a method of writing software. So it's a way of writing software. So as you can see here, the way he uh, talks about it in uh, extreme programming is planning feedback loops. We can see release plan. When are we going to release the software? And uh, iteration plan. You know how will we iterate through it uh, with any issues? and writing assistant test having stand-up meetings once a day so this is like release plan goes for months iterative plan iteration plan goes for weeks assistance days standard meeting one day per day peer negotiation hours and unit testing in minutes in peer programming in seconds uh you know talking about problems or whatever and writing the code so this is how you know shows the thing so you have a code Go with peer programming, go through unit testing cycle, and y then you go through you know peer negotiation cycle. You go through stand up meeting cycle. You go assistant test cycles, iterations, then releases. So that's how it goes. You know related with code. It's pretty good uh, image. All right. So after that we have. Uh, you know, the just just this one just shows the you know steps of TDD. So how it is. So let's say how it's you know practiced. One well, number one, we have a write a test enough to make it fail. Then we run it and see it fail. Then we write the code. We run the test again and see it pass. Repeat step one. Yeah. So it's like a closed loop process. Uh, as you saw in the other image that we just saw over. What was that? Mm, in extreme programming right here and this image over here awesome let's move on now yeah this is some stuff uh, uh, explanation of this which i just gave you now what are the benefits right benefits of tdd it helps to keep the distance between you and what you know works and what does not in your code very thin you can pretty much figure out what went wrong since you had the test working perfectly a few seconds ago yeah that's exactly what uh, even the action programming says right here it's like in a few you know seconds that you have uh, right yeah a few seconds uh, let's say minutes minutes or seconds usually you find the you know feedback already from the unit test 
that's how you get your feedback all right few seconds ago and then now the next uh, one point i have here is it helps to minimize the time needed to refactory code since you can easily test if something breaks when you refactor yeah so yeah it, of course it minimizes the time right because you can easily refactory code that's what the second number says number three it makes adding new features that much easy since you can change the code to accommodate new features very easily yeah that which is true and if you go on the point four it makes you confident as a programmer yeah so point two and three since you can easily refactor your code and you can also change your code easily to add new features then you are confident you don't have to worry about the code breaking uh, that's what lots of uh, people i mean lots of programmers face if they do, do not have code it's very hard to change something because it may break something else and that's you know s a scary thought to break things maybe the code is in already proxim and you don't want to you know take a long time to fix something and uh, let's okay so number four number five it helps to break down software development in chunks that you can manage yeah so you know something that we always have to think about is in anything in anything that we are trying to learn or something we're trying to do is we have to manage them into chunks because anything that is you know just overextended gets very hard to maintain it gets very hard to concentrate on and usually it will fail so managing anything into chunks is a good productivity technique for you know just basically anything and which also applies to software number six it helps to stop the exponential cost of change as the software grows yeah so as you add more code the code base gets bigger and the more harder it is to read and the more like uh, mental energy you need to really understand what was going on what did you write before so uh, so it helps to you know cap that because if you run the code if you run the test you know what you did in the code and if you change something you already know what problem there is so it's easier to you know manage the software as a whole yeah exponential cost of changes which i um, got the you know the term from is from a, a talk called min maxing software cost by constantin and this is the guy ever that um so let's see constantin yeah i guess he i don't know if he's showing his own photo or or his sons but i guess it's him when he was small but then his real photos should be somewhere else um, i would say constantin so if we go to here maybe he has his photo on his website i don't know i guess not but it should be of course if we open the video then we will see him right here whoops not the twitter main maxing software cost all right this is the one so yep this is the video and the it's sky. talk I, for I, this conference so i you know highly recommend that you take a look at this you know watch this uh, uh, talk this talk which is in the article it will you will uh, learn quite a lot about you know uh, you know the importance of actually having uh, tests for a code code base so wonderful talk yeah so it's the same thing from the talk I just got the graph from the talk and then this is what is when you add a payment method you have like a simple things to you know support payments but you need to add payment is the cost of the project just goes up because now you need to write the code to add payment method and the project length also increases it's getting harder as you you know the project length increases it's exponential but if there are tests you know you can easily add payment method because you know what uh, you can easily add the payment method because you you know what are like already running and what needs to extend and uh, without breaking any support payments which you have test for you can add payment method that's why the tests are important and it's not <coughs> and it's not going exponential anymore it's just you know slowly go going linear as the project uh, time increases project length increases all right there are 
course some disadvantage yep now we get to the disadvantage part it's not easy yeah main thing is like you know it's not easy you need to learn a lot of new terms and techniques and you need to be doing it for quite a while before you can follow tdd um so and the next thing is opposite it takes more time up front but then it actually saves you time later so that's one of the disadvantages like it takes it a bit more time in front but then it's worth it yeah another thing is is td the dead series by martin fowler can't beg the guy we just saw earlier can beg and martin fowler is another software guy who is from uk very famous for his uh, books uh books that he has written refactoring and other books too he has quite a lot of books yeah refactoring yeah book on refactoring <laughs> martin fowler can beck uh, david hanmer hansen is another guy who wrote the ruby on rails ruby on rails framework uh yep you can see that he's also one of the guy and he did the in the argument martin and uh can't are you know for the test but david says you know we don't need test every times which td is like till dead that's what he says so that's an argument they have in each td dead series uh you can go through it here they have a video in youtube too so it's quite interesting and fascinating i recommend it i recommend you to go through it too um yep they have part 1 2 3 4 and 5 um okay um, yeah so that's what it is uh, let's go through it this some description of what test driven development right so which is the same thing that we described earlier yeah different type of test unit testing unit testing is you know the lowest level of testing you can do exactly right here it's, it's just a method inside a class and it does not interact with classes directly but you know with the other classes but just with mocks so you make mocks and then you interact with that uh so that you know it's isolated and integration testing is where it connects with two or three classes and then you actually test the real functionality of an external api or you know database or anything else that you're getting any information that you're getting integration testing okay that's what that is um I, yeah, functional testing is something that you do you know it's pretty much similar with uh, integration testing but it does it in a more wider sense as in like your whole controller is like called and then it will test a bunch of uh, classes plus some api or database anything everything so uh, through it so it's like one whole function or one whole feature that is being tested and touching a lot of parts so it's pretty much like a bigger version of integration testing okay so we go through then we go acceptance testing acceptance testing is something that you do through like the browser automating like uh, manually we go through the test right like if something is form is working or not and if we getting the proper output those things uh, that we do manually can be actually automated through tests like selenium and it will just automate your browser testing uh flow okay so let name yeah all right and there's something called phantom js2 so there are some things that we can use so which selenium is what i have used and it's pretty good for php at least all right uh in the next part we will go through how to phantom js right something i said is phantom js php and tm is phantom js yeah scriptable scriptable headless testing right phantom js testing headless testing at phantom js php courseception is one that supports it all right i think it does have a phantom js support if we go through oh uh, ha ha in a substance testing Yep, web driver, PHP browser, 
Yeah, there we go. Mm, Selenium standard server Chrome or Firefox, I see. I don't think it has Phantom GS. No. Alright. Alright, so this is what the basic introduction about uh, you know test driven development is. Uh, in the next episode, we'll go through setting up uh, you know a project through Laravel framework and also starting out you know setup of PHP unit, and then we can get started uh, learning how to do unit testing and uh, more coming on in the next series. I mean, in next on the next episodes. Uh, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Right, see you.